Hey guys, Sun here. I'm a privacy and a security researcher and you're watching the Privacy Guides. In today's episode, I wanna show you how to set up your very own crypto donation holding using a Trezor hardware wallet and Trezor Suite. Recently, I was asked if I accepted donations in Dogecoin and other altcoins. And my answer was no, because setting that up is a lot of work. Uh, and I essentially started looking into how I could accept crypto donations and altcoins without, you know, infringing on my privacy and stuff like this. Uh, and I stumbled upon Trezor Suite. Trezor Suite is an app that is developed by Satoshi Labs slash Trezor. It's an app that one can run on macOS. It is actually possible to run it on Tails. To that extent, there is some reference material on the Privacy Guide's GitHub repository, which I will link in the description on how to do this. Uh, but on Mac OS uh, and on Tails, it is possible to route all of the outbound connections to the nodes over Tor, which is great for privacy. The app itself is also open source as usual when it comes to Trezor. So yeah, it was a really cool setup that I could use to accept altcoin donations. I wanted to create this episode and share with you. So I got in touch with Trezor and they were okay with essentially sponsoring this episode. So thanks Trezor for that. Without further ado, let's jump in. Today's guide will be on macOS. As I said, this can also work on Tails and a whole bunch of other operating systems, uh, which you can then you know, choose here. But for the sake of today's episode, I clicked here to download the Mac app and it is here in my downloads folder. So as with any other app, you want to essentially drag and drop Trezor Suite to the applications folder, after which we can just run Trezor Suite. Uh, now it will run a little large for my screen. Oh yeah, so given this was not downloaded through the App Store, we need to allow it. So we wanna click on open. And uh, yes, I will make that window a tiny bit smaller here. I'm using Little Snitch. Uh, it's my application layer firewall. So if you don't use an application layer firewall, you don't need to worry about this. For sake of simplicity here, I'll just allow all outbound connections. Uh, once this is done, as we can see here on the device, it says, welcome, please visit trezor.io slash start. That device is as it would be if it came out of the box. Essentially, there is no firmware on it, so we need to install the firmware first. But before we do this, Trezor has always been very privacy conscious. That's why the Trezor Suite app has a Tor integration built in, but it's also why we get to choose if we wanna submit anonymous data collection uh, stuff, and we don't. So we say continue. Now, uh, it asks us to make sure that the Trezor that we have purchased is legitimate and there are fakes. So if ever you buy a Trezor device on Amazon, please make sure that the seller is Trezor itself, not some kind of a third party seller. Uh, you can also buy Trezor devices off the official Trezor store. So that's shop.trezor.io. Now, when we get the box, uh, essentially we wanna make sure that it is legitimate. Uh, there's those little holograms, uh, seals, there's like a whole bunch of instructions which you can find actually on this URL if you wanna double check this. Uh, so going back here, my hologram, oh, here you go, actually, my hologram was intact and untempered with. I bought from an official shop uh, and you know, package wasn't tempered with. Cool, let's go. Now we need to install firmware, so I'll click install firmware. As we can see on the device here, it says preparing please wait, and eventually it's gonna say installing uh, right about now. So that's pretty straightforward here. This used to be a lot more complicated when we had to do it off a browser, and I never really liked doing this stuff in a browser. So I'm quite pumped by the fact that Trezor is, has released this app, which we can now run on Mac uh, in a more compartmentalized way. So uh, firmware is installing, uh, should be done within a moment. Uh, Let's see, the device is now restarting and we are set. Okay, so now we can click continue. Now I am expecting if you're watching this, it's probably your first wallet uh, or you might just be interested in seeing how that would actually work. Uh, so we're gonna go about creating a new wallet and it will ask us how we wanna back up the seed when using a Model 1 or a Trezor 1 there's only one mode, which is the standard seed backup. If you have a Trezor Model T looking at the overhead cam here, this one has a touchscreen. It has a few features. I'll discuss this a bit later in the episode, but if you use a Model T, you can do a Shamir secret sharing backup, which is much safer. It gets us to have different shares that we can shard and geolocate differently and stuff like this. Um, but yeah, more on this in a second. 
For this one here, we're using the more affordable model one, uh, and we're gonna go about creating the backup here. So if we see what's going on screen here, uh, it says, do you really want to create a new wallet? Yes, now it says needs backup. So we can also see this here on the screen. It says your wallet is almost ready. You've successfully set up your Trezor and created your wallet. You need, uh, you should never use your Trezor without backing it up. So if we click uh, create backup, uh, it says check your backup in device settings before sending money. Never take a photo or make a digital copy of the backup and keep your backup secured. So that backup, it's a set of 24 words that are written on a piece of paper by yourself. That backup, in my opinion, should never be stored in the same location as the hardware wallet itself because if ever the house burns to the ground, both uh, are burnt out, I mean, essentially the holding is lost. So I think it's always best to save that set of 24 words in a secure location away from where the hardware wallet itself is stored. Now, you may be wondering, son, if that backup is words on a piece of paper, can't anyone with that piece of paper recover the wallet and steal my funds? The answer is yes, but one can enable a passphrase, which we'll do in a moment, and that passphrase means that that set of 24 words is not enough. We're gonna be creating what we call a hidden wallet, and that's what we're gonna be using uh, to accept crypto donations. So, uh, all of this said, oh yeah, and also, never ever take a picture of that paper and store it on your computer. It's on paper by design. It's what we call cold storage. Uh, it's a piece of non-tech. It's a piece of paper, which is intended to be completely air gapped away from the computer. So please don't put those in your password manager. Uh, same applies to the passphrase or the pin. Please make sure that it is on paper and remains on paper, that it wasn't photographed and that no one had you know direct uh, line of sight on it when it was created. So uh, begin backup. Now, if we have a look at the Trezor device, it will display a set of 24 words which need to be written on a piece of paper in the order that they are displayed. And it is perfectly normal if the same word ap appears twice, each word is chosen completely randomly. So theoretically speaking, the 24 words could be the same, but that is like completely uh, statistically improbable. Um, okay, so let's assume that I'm writing those on a piece of paper like you should. So you would write the number one, number two would be window, number three would be acid, and so forth. So you would go through the whole list, and there are 24 words. And when you get to the end, uh, it will actually cycle back through the list. So again, uh, you want to make sure, confirming on a piece of paper, that you wrote the words in the right order as they're shown here on the screen. So I'm going through this a little fast here because the episode will be quite long, but you get the point. Now, uh, it says, well, backup completed, now continue to pin. So if I click on this, we now want to set a pin. The pin is something that makes sure that no one can get access to this device uh, except for the, the owner, the one with the pin. Uh, that pin, does not affect the paper backup in any way. So it is really just a pin to protect this hardware wallet. Uh, so if we click set pin, what we'll see here on screen is it will say, do you really want to set a new pin? And we're gonna say yes. And now on the screen here, you can see that the numbers have been shuffled. So if we're looking at what's on screen, there are blank little slots here. So say the pin we want is 9452 we'll write nine, four, five, two, enter pin. And now it's gonna be shuffled again on screen. So nine, uh, four, five, two, enter pin. Now one could choose a longer pin. It's something that we must not forget. So we have to be mindful of this. And also if it's a pin that one has used elsewhere, it's probably not as secure. So I would recommend a new pin that one has to memorize. If ever you forget your pin, it's totally not cool, but with the paper backup, it's possible to recover from this. Um, okay, so now we click continue. Now it's that step where we wanna activate coins. So by default, Bitcoin is enabled, but we're also gonna enable for sake of this example, Ethereum and Dogecoin. That means that we would be able to accept donations or manage uh, a crypto holding for Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Dogecoin all within Trezor Suite. 
Now we can also go in the Tor tab and enable Tor. And I would like to take a moment to thank the developers that have made this possible. That is one of the features that makes me really appreciate Trezor. Not only is Trezor and its ecosystem open source, uh, but the people at Trezor really care about privacy and they have put in a lot of work to make sure that Tor is shipped with Trezor Suite and it just works. So that is something that I'm really grateful for. So we can click continue setup and now the setup is complete so we can access Suite. Now, uh, one is asked to select a wallet type. It could be either standard or hidden wallet. I always, 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 always recommend setting a passphrase. How that works is within the hardware wallet is a set of private keys and pub keys. The private key is what makes that hardware wallet capable of generating addresses, receiving addresses on different blockchains. Um, that passphrase, if ever the hardware wallet was to be compromised or if ever someone found the paper backup, that passphrase can be compromised. But when one sets a passphrase, enabling that hidden wallet feature, that makes it so that when one plugs in the Trezor device, one is asked to supply that passphrase. That passphrase is never stored on device. It is used in an ephemeral way to derive from the keys on device a new set of private and pub keys that are then tied to a wallet. And that's what I'm gonna show here. So you wanna enter a passphrase I'm gonna enter this one here. That is a five word passphrase from the EFF short word list that has a pretty decent amount of entropy for this kind of use case. When we do this and we look at the screen here, one is asked to essentially confirm access hidden wallet. And then the next step will actually display that uh, passphrase, so voice, lurk, baggy, moist, scoop, confirm. Uh, this is something that I tend to hide. So I tend to take it like this and hide it when I'm looking at it to make sure that no one with line of sight would be able to actually see this. Uh, when using the Model T, the Model T here, using the overhead cam, it's kind of nicer here, has a screen. So one can type the pin on the screen itself as well as type the passphrase on the screen itself, which makes the Model T a more secure option or a more air-gapped option than the one. Uh, the T also supports other altcoins such as Monero and ADA or Cardano, I always mess that up. So that is the one that I am actually using for my own uh, crypto holding. But I wanted to use the Model 1 or the Trezor 1 because it is quite affordable. So it might be you know a way for most of us to just get started on this. And it is possible to transfer the mnemonic from 1 to Model T if ever those altcoins are needed later. Uh, okay, so since there are no balances to any of the coins uh, that are linked to this hardware wallet, one is asked to confirm that uh, passphrase again. So okay, I understand passphrase cannot uh, retrieve uh, be retrieved on like everyday passwords, confirm. So now looking at the device itself again, uh, it says access hidden wallet. Yes, let's try, having a hard time focusing this. And then we can see that one again. So interestingly enough, I made a typo. So if I say confirm, uh, it won't work. So I'm gonna have to say cancel and start over. So I'm gonna retry here. Let me see again. Okay, so I understand passphrase cannot be uh, retrieved. And then here, if we look at this again, voice, lurk, baggy, moist, scoop, confirm. Now, hopefully, yeah, that's good. So now we're in the wallet and we can see here that there are no balances. The last step here for us to be able to accept crypto donations is to publish receiving addresses. So if I click on Bitcoin and I then go on receive, I can then say sh show full address and on the device here, uh, we can then confirm that the address we're seeing on device matches the one on screen. The reason why that validation step exists is that if ever the computer was to be compromised, it could not compromise the hardware wallet itself, which means that if they both match, well, the, the real source of truth is actually the hardware wallet. That's why we use hardware wallets in the first place. 
Um, so we can then copy the address. And if we have a look at the way I've done it on my website, if you go on donations, well, I have published a Bitcoin address and I have published a few uh, crypto donation addresses. So Dogecoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and Zcash. Those are also linked to Trezor Suite. Trezor Suite does not support Cardano or Monero yet. Let us know in the comments if that's something that you would like to see in the future. For those, I'm using a separate app. Maybe this is an episode that I should publish. Let me know again in the uh, comments. So that's pretty much it. Going back here to the wallet, one would want to go on the dashboard and then go in Ethereum and do receive again uh, and do this for all different coins that one wishes to accept donations for. So that's it. It's super simple. Uh, thanks to everyone who has donated, uh, you know, and that's been super helpful, has helped me put more time uh, onto creating this kind of content. And thanks to Trezor for supporting my work as well by sponsoring this episode. Uh, that's all I have for you today. I will see you soon. Bye.